Hi, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm excited that you're here with me today to see how I reduced my stretch marks. Yes, that's right. I'm one of the 50% of women that did get stretch marks. Not surprisingly, I got them during my first pregnancy, but they are whoppers and the reason they're so bad is because I gained 75 pounds with my first pregnancy. For those of you who haven't seen my Hunger Monster video, if you have problems with overeating, I did too for most of my adult life, and I hope you'll take a look at that Hunger Monster video because it shows what I finally did to get rid of the voracious appetite that I had all of those years. But getting back to that first pregnancy, my son is now 34 years old, so unfortunately I have had those stretch marks for 34 years. But amazingly enough, my stomach looks great. In fact, I did not get one stretch mark anywhere on my tummy. Here's a look at my tummy right now. Still looks like I hardly even had a baby long ago. But amazingly enough, your stomach is not the only place you get stretch marks during pregnancy. You can also get them about anywhere else on your body. And horribly enough, I got them on the front of my thighs. For you younger women out there, if I could go back in time and tell my younger 25 year old self what to do in terms of that first pregnancy, I would say eat for health for sure, but don't eat for two. I think I wanted to look pregnant and so I looked pregnant really quick because I ate exactly what I wanted to eat which was a bunch of stuff and I gained 75 pounds with that pregnancy up to 200 pounds. I was absolutely huge and I'll show you my before and after pictures of my stretch marks in just a few moments but first let me tell you how it came about that I got treated for the stretch marks. Having stretch marks on the front of my thighs actually in one way was a blessing because of course when you have stretch marks on the front of your thighs you can't even wear a one-piece bathing suit to cover them up so all of those years I really didn't want people to see my stretch marks so I hardly ever got in a swimsuit which actually kept me out of the sun which I think made my skin look better than it would had I not had the stretch marks if I hadn't had those stretch marks I would have been out by the pool a lot of summer days and I really didn't do that so it really did keep me out of the sun which in one way was a positive thing as you know I always say God doesn't give bad gifts and so I I tried to look at what gift I had out of the stretch marks and actually it was kind of a gift for my face because I did stay out of the sun. I had no idea there was really a treatment that worked for stretch marks. I had tried cocoa butter, I had tried stretch mark cream, Strivectin, you name it, I bought it if it was out there and believe me ladies, none of those creams works. So I just thought, well, you know, got to get used to the idea and forget about it. So amazingly enough, when I was going out to Spokane, Washington to see Dr. Chestnut to get my Mohs surgery here, this is my little Mohs incision after five months, I found out from his office staff that he had a way to significantly reduce stretch marks. And I was a little bit leery about it, but I asked them to explain it to me. And I decided that I would go ahead and have this treatment done when I was getting the Mohs surgery. So I had the Mohs procedure in the morning and then that afternoon I came back and Dr. Chestnut did a laser procedure to help reduce my stretch marks. And I will say that although at this point there's no way to totally eliminate stretch marks, I do feel that this treatment that he did for me really did significantly help. And quite honestly, when I went out to Spokane to have this treatment, I didn't really think I was going to share it with you because I've always been kind of embarrassed about my stretch marks and I never wanted to show them to anyone. But then after the fact, I thought, well, heck, you know, this is a beauty related channel and that was certainly a good procedure. Maybe some people would be interested in that. So I thought I would show you the results. But I will say that had I known that I was going to make this into a video, I would have taken better and more careful before pictures. So you'll have to kind of look around that a little bit. But first, I'll let you hear from Shelby, who is Dr. Chestnut's nurse, and she'll tell you a little bit about how the procedure works. After he examined you, he is going to use Sculptra and CO2 laser mm -hmm. to kind of smooth them out because they're, they're atrophic and we can build some collagen underneath. And so does he do the Sculptra first? Does he fill them up first? Um, I believe we would do Sculptra first and then laser. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And so the Sculptra just over time builds collagen? Yes, it does. So when I went back that afternoon, I went into Dr. Chestnut's laser room and he has several different laser machines in that room and he had me sit on this table and he kind of reclined me back a little bit. He cleaned my thighs very nicely with alcohol or some sort of cleaning solution. Then he put a numbing solution on my thighs and I think I waited about 15 to 20 minutes for that to kick in. And once I was good and numb, he came back in and everybody, including me, had to wear these little goggles to protect our eyes. He injected the Sculptra in all of the little furrows of the stretch marks and he spent quite some time doing that because as you will see in just a few minutes, I have a lot of stretch marks on the front of my thighs. 
The reason they use Sculptra is it is a filler that actually causes your body to rebuild collagen. So the Sculptra immediately raises the little divoted areas, brings those up level with the rest of your skin, and then over time your own collagen comes in and rebuilds that area. And so the idea is that over time all of the stretch marks should just sort of blend in with your skin. And after he injected the Sculptra, he went over both of my thighs with a CO2 laser, and that is a fully ablative laser. And what that means is that while a Fraxel laser just gets little pinpoints of laser, a fully ablative laser actually takes off a layer of skin on the top. And in a moment I'll show you the healing process so you can see how much skin that fully ablative laser does remove and it's quite considerable. And before I show you the before and after pictures and show you what results I've had, I'll show you a little bit about the healing process. The first picture on the left is immediately after the laser process. You can see the skin is kind of turned brown because basically he has burned the skin. And then he put a layer of Vaseline over that. And in fact, I had to keep the area moist for probably a month using Vaseline. And then on the second picture there, that is one of my thighs three days after the procedure. It doesn't look as greasy right now. I guess in that moment, I didn't have the Vaseline on there. Although it looks very red and inflamed, it really doesn't hurt. And in fact, due to the numbing cream he used, the procedure itself really didn't hurt either. I would say over maybe the first three or four days, sometimes I felt a little bit of discomfort as the healing was setting in. And for the first week after that procedure, I kept the Vaseline on my thighs and I kept them wrapped in saran wrap, which kind of helped when I would wear jeans because it would have been a little bit uncomfortable to rub those wounds up against some denim fabric. Now before I show you the before and after pictures, I want to give you a little bit of a warning that sometimes these fully ablative lasers will give someone a little bit of discoloration, a little bit of hyperpigmentation, looks a little bit red, and that did happen with me, but that is a side effect that can be normal and it does subside over time. However, he has given me some hydroquinone cream to put on my thighs to help that redness go away a little bit sooner. Now first I'll show you my right thigh. Here are the before and after pictures. As you can see, I have very significant stretch marks on my right thigh in the before picture. And in the after picture, you can't see the hyperpigmentation that much, but it's definitely there in real life. But you can see that the stretch marks, while they are still there, they are significantly reduced. Now on my left thigh, I had even more stretch marks on my left thigh. I don't know why, but for some reason my left thigh got more stretch marks. So as you can see in the after picture there on the left thigh, I have a lot more hyperpigmentation than I did on the right thigh because he actually hit it harder with the laser because I had more stretch marks there. I feel like my stretch marks have greatly improved. However, you'll have to use your own judgment on that. I do feel that while I obviously still have stretch marks, they are much improved. The cost of the procedure is expensive. It was $3,000 to do the entire procedure on both thighs, and it does vary depending upon how many stretch marks you have and all of that. And what Dr. Chestnut says is that generally he gets about a 50% improvement each time he does the procedure. And he said that many women will come back several times and that generally there's a 50% reduction in the stretch marks each time. I will tell you though, at $3,000, I'm not going to go back again. I really do feel that I got a 50% improvement in my stretch marks, which makes me feel really good. And my husband says he thinks they're greatly improved as well. I do feel like it was worth it for me to have the procedure because while I still do have stretch marks, now they're kind of even with my skin, they blend in a lot better, and I know especially once the redness leaves, I will feel okay about being in a swimsuit. Now even though I'm not going to be returning to Spokane and Dr. Chestnut to get a second procedure, I am going to be doing something right here, here in Kansas, to work on my stretch marks myself. I have actually been sent a Derminator machine, and I'm going to be using the Derminator on my stretch marks, and we'll see if we can't produce some further improvement on them. And if you're not currently a subscriber, and you'd like to see a little more on my continuing saga of my stretch mark journey, I hope you'll click that little bell that just notifies you of my future videos. Now, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day, and I'm going to be using this card deck, the Life Loves You cards. They're by Louise Hay. Okay, let's see what God in the universe has in mind for us to think about today. Ooh, a big long one. I love and accept myself. I love and accept myself. Your self-image is made up of your judgments. It's not the real you. Sit for 10 minutes with this question. What's it like to be me when I'm not judging myself? Ooh, what's it like to be me when I'm not judging myself? Oh my, am I ever not judging myself? That is an absolutely wonderful card because when I think about it, in my first half, I spent a lot of time with that judge and jury in my head, judging everything I did and largely finding me at fault. Life is too short and I really want to live without judging myself. And what would that be like? 
That would be absolutely wonderful. Instead of finding fault with myself, I would look at myself and know I was doing the best I could. I would give myself pats on the back and I would say, good job, you're doing okay. And instead of living with the judge and jury up here, I would be living with a great friend who loved me, was kind to me, and really wanted the best for me. So just for today, the minute we hear that little judge start to criticize us, say, stop. What would a best friend say? Chances are that little best friend inside your head would say, you're doing a good job, you're doing the best you can, I love you, I'm proud of you, I'm lucky to have you. When we pitch the judge and replace it with love and self-acceptance, we can have a fabulous second half. Take care. See you next time.